Max, first of all, we, you know, <laughs> when you're a member of an organisation, you have to pay an affiliation fee. Uh, end of story. You can't say, well, hang on, we're going to take some of that affiliation fee back because we disagree with that or disagree with this. That isn't how. No, don't be coming back at me just because you've got a mic. No, I was just going to say, I'd like to give a scenario anyway. The reality is that you can't do that. You can't do that. We are affiliated to the party. We pay our affiliation fees. Three, three million pounds a year, by the way. So it's not chicken fees. And we pay our affiliation fees so that we can play a role in the democratic structures of the party. And the democratic structures of the party mean that we will voice our opinion. But if it isn't the majority, then you can't take it back and go home. The reality is that we believe the views that we have are the views of the majority of all the American people, and certainly the views of the majority of trade unions. So that's why we need to be more effective working as unions together. We haven't always been as effective as we should be. So it is a question, as I said before, that in the past we've written a check when Tony Blair or Gordon Brown said, you know what, we desperately need £100,000, come on, give us it. And the checkbook has been out. That isn't happening anymore, certainly not in Unite. Uh, because uh, not that I want to buy um, uh, policies from the Labour Party, because that's a dangerous route to go down. But it is simply to say, we are affiliated, we will argue for our principles, and of course, if that, those principles start to gain resonance amongst the leadership, then of course we'll be more uh, prepared to look at financial help. But I don't want to just do this from a top-down position, and that's our comment from PCS, that's why it has to be a thought-out strategy from the bottom up as well, or coming and meeting together. Uh, because we do need to get people back in. You know, I want PCS to be affiliated to the Labour Party. I don't want unions like PCS, good fighting back unions like the RMT or the FBU, outside of the Labour Party. Now, I know there's reasons for that. And I know that PCS are arguing for... Uh, uh, their political fund and there'll be debates about running candidates against uh, Labour candidates. You know, comrades will have to make their own judgments. We've got trade union, the trade union socialist candidate group now that as a result of Southampton when we won the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the council back for Labour, mm -hmm. uh, one of the seats was lost uh, because there was a Tusk candidate that ran and allowed a Tory councillor back in. So, whilst I understand the frustration of people who have been betrayed by the Labour Party, my view is that we should try again. And the comment, Max, about the LRC is a good one. We should be, as unions, more proactive and supportive of LRC. Because it does capture the very essence of what we're about. And we've got to take that message back. We've got to say to good socialists who are frustrated with Labour, well, it's not something that uh, we, we, we can just allow to go by. There is no evidence that there's any other alternative coming forward. My comrades in the Socialist Party, which is very influential in PCS, have to ask themselves the question, I respect them as a revolutionary socialist party, but I have to ask the question about where are they assisting us in winning the Labour Party back for our values if we're talking about running candidates. And I know the argument about well, we'll only run candidates against Labour people who uh, don't hold our values. But that isn't good enough. That's sloganism. We need to get in at grassroots level. The alliance that I'm ta talking about, I'm hoping, will attract RMT. FBU, other good comrades back into it, so that that common narrative can be argued for. As regards the Labour Party, what plans do we have? Well, I'm not going to say. No, I, 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 in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of resolutions and that, well, we're still debating that with our sister unions. As you know, uh, Unis and GMB and ourselves work together We figure out how uh, questions will be put forward. But part of what I said before is about reclaiming the party for our values, making the Labour Party conference um, 
uh, democratic again. You know, I got into some trouble because uh, the, the refounding Labour talked about, oh, you know, uh, we, we've got to reduce the trade union vote to 50-50, and I was asked questions and said, you know what, I don't go to sleep at night worrying about a 50-50 split at a Labour Party conference. You know, I am therefore uh, not necessarily wedded to 50%. I got myself into all kinds of trouble saying it, by the way, with, in, inside my own union, so please keep it within these four walls. Um, because what I want is a democratic conference again. I want a democratic conference. I've been in the Labour Party now since 1970, and I've, um, I've seen the change. I've seen when uh, the, the block votes at Labour Party conferences was 90%, and where the constituencies were left-wing, progressive, fighting for progressive policies, only for the block votes of the trade unions to kill them dead. The leadership then were happy to have block votes of trade unions. Now as life moved on, as life moved on and the party became more democratic, the reality is we've had a reversal of roles. Constituency Labour parties at uh, Labour Party conferences now are predominantly right wing and new Labour yeah. for all kinds of reasons. A third of our constituency parties don't even send a delegate to the, uh, to, 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 to the annual conference. Others are dominated and manipulated by the new Labour right-wing bureaucrats and apparatchiks who control the regions. We've got to challenge that. That's where we challenge. At root level, at regional level. So that our conference becomes more democratic and the passing of resolutions then becomes much more purposeful. And a point my comrade made about Liverpool across, you know, close to my heart, they were uh, my mates, uh, two and a half years on strike, started the strike under a Tory government and finished it under Labour. Uh, I'm not quite sure he promised them that it would be alright when Labour came in, but I always had my doubts, and uh, of course uh, those doubts were sure to be true. Um, but you made a point at the end that it's one thing trying to move the Labour Party to the left, but you know, let's not forget that we need to move our unions to the left to be progressive, including my own. You know, I have a, a policy in my union that where democratic debate will be allowed to flourish at every level of our, our organisation, including criticism, including criticism of me if I've done something wrong. And that kind of lay member, rank and file democracy, is something that should be fought for in all unions, so that we can have leaders of trade unions who are left of centre and more progressive, and then, as you say, we can channel our energies towards the Labour Party. I'm confident that we can make a breakthrough. All of you know, those of you that are uh, members of the Labour Party and go to your constituency Labour Parties, you know full well, somebody called OII, this, this looks like entryism again. Well, I don't call it what you want, but you know full well that if suddenly 20 trade unionists turned up as new delegates to the constituency Labour Party, you basically take the party over. Uh, so our task is not enormous, but it is complex. And it is something, because you are absolutely right, in how do you persuade people? How do you persuade public sector workers? Come on, join, join the Labour Party. What, is that that Labour Party that called for pay restraint on low paid workers? Is that the party you want me to join? So it is difficult. It's not uh, an easy task. And that's why I've come back to this common narrative. If we have a common narrative and we have specific objectives, uh, objectives and you say this is why we want you to join the party, so that we don't have stupid comments about pay restraint being a good thing, that is why we want the party of our choice and of our values. I believe that we can do that, comrades, and with your help, I'm sure uh, that we will.